Hello friends, this video on DNF block elements part 25 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Of D block elements, we will talk about the interstitial compound. So what are the interstitial compound? I think we have studied about this interstitial compound. See interstitial compounds are those compounds which are formed when small atoms like uh, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, all these are small atoms. These small atoms are trapped somewhere here. So if you see small atoms here, for example, this place is, these are all small atoms. Sometimes they are trapped. This is the NaCl crystal. I mean, it can be any crystal. So there, let's suppose there's a crystal of metals and in this crystal, these small, small atoms are trapped. Okay. Now, since these metals are just trapped, there is no actual bonding. So they are usually non-stoichiometric. Okay. Once again, since they are just trapped and there is no bond, so they are generally non stoichiometric for example TiH 1.7 that is for every one uh, titanium you have 1.7 hydrogen they're just trapped okay and these non I mean non stoichiometric com compound if you want to define they are the chemical compound that can't be represented by a ratio of well-defined natural number for example CO2 it's a well-defined natural number this is TiH 1.7 not a well-defined natural number these are non stoichiometric compounds, right? Typically, in this case, small molecules are trapped and they are trapped in any ratio. Uh, they are not, they don't have a proper bond. Okay. But they have different properties. This interstitial compound, they have high melting point and boiling point than that of pure metals. They are very hard. They are very hard. They have the hardness similar to diamond also. They are chemically inert. Chemically, they are inert, and uh, their metallic conductivity is retained. And but their ductility, ductility, and malleability is reduced. That is reduced. See, this is my structure. We have discussed these structures in the past few chapters. So here. Some of the small, small molecules like carbon and nitrogen are trapped. Okay, if you want to visualize in this fashion. So they are trapped, the whole formula changes and it's all non-stoichiometric. You can also say these are non-stoichiometric defects also. The next is alloy formation. See, alloy formation is almost uh, similar as uh, the interstitial compound. But here we have the mutual substitution of atoms. So here, if let's suppose one atom is replaced actually. So if you want to introduce one, one has to go out. Okay. So since now there is a difference. See, in case of interstitial, we were using small atoms like carbon, nitrogen, right? Or uh, so hydrogen. So these were small, small atoms. These were occupying this, the extra space here, right? Extra space here. That was interstitial compound but in this case of alloy formation we are saying if I am introducing an atom one atom has to be replaced that means the new atom should be of comparable size right it should also be of the comparable size for example this red one it can actually replace this gray one okay so these this is the new atom and that's what we do so we talk about definition of alloy. Alloy is nothing but the blend of metals prepared by mixing various metals. And they are homogeneous solid solution in which atoms of one metal is actually distributed randomly across the metal, across the atom of another metal. For example, copper and zinc. Copper and zinc, the size is almost same. So copper can replace zinc atoms in the lattice. Okay. So there is a, I mean, you, you just can't form alloy for any two metal or any two element. The size of the atom should match. You can't form an alloy of copper and hydrogen. Not possible. But you can form an alloy of copper and zinc. That's why you see when you talk about alloy, you talk about alloys of typically metals of similar size. Okay. So plus minus 15% is okay. But yeah, that's what the range we are looking for. For example, this is 100 picometer, it can be 100 uh, or 85 to 115 picometer. I'm just taking two elements, X and Y. That should be the range. 
okay and these alloys are formed by the atoms with metallic radius that is almost 15 cm of each other the way i explained just now okay now if you see in transition metal we have seen that this uh, metals have similar radius copper zinc they have similar radius since they have similar radius you can form alloy with them easily because see the alloy formation the main catch here is similar radius right because you have to the new atom should replace the existing atom so it should fit because there is already lettuce here right so if you want to uh, remove this red ball with one more ball here so this ball should actually fit in this place right so this ball should be plus minus 15 percent of this ball correct and this feature is there in transition metal most of the metals they have almost similar atomic size since they have similar atomic size they are fit to form alloy by mutual substitution for example brass brass is made from copper and zinc bronze bronze is made from copper and tin and these alloys have different property altogether and they have huge industry application we have seen the brass and bronze has been quietly used in the industries and because they have different properties so now with this let's do a quick recap thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get pre-study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again